we've got this really great article that I went to talk about, um, courtesy of Flipping RA. That's absolutely wonderful. And kind of, for me, is a bit of a throwback to the golden era of RA. For me, the golden era of RA was around 2005, no, 2005, no, 2004 to, to like 2016 was for me the golden era of flipping RA when I discovered it around that sort of time where basically I immersed myself on every single part of that site. I legitimately think I must have read every feature back then. I must have went through every DJ poll, every flipping, um, every flipping um, DJ poll, every feature, every interview, every mix series. I went through everything. I devoured the whole thing because that was the first time I sort of discovered electronic music, dance music and DJs overall. And I went to really kind of absorb everything about it, especially because I was, I was all the way in ends. I was living in Canton Town in my mum's house and whatnot. And I just was all the way away from that whole scene. I didn't know nothing about it. I had no cool hips of friends. I was kind of just in ends slumming it out. And I kind of was transported to this other world when I see all these features and these interviews. And if anything... Those first features that I read about Berlin, about the club scene overall, is what basically made me want to go. Like, I think I have a lot of people, like, thank a lot of them. And I do kind of appreciate people who kind of come up to me and say, oh, wow, man, your podcast basically made me want to go to Berlin and made me want to go to these places, made me want to go to Fold and shit. That's obviously, you know, I, I'm appreciative of that completely. But, you know, my main thing, my kind of, you know, I take, I take no kind of um, credit for it because a lot of that early sort of inspiration I got was from RA. RA are the one that kind of gave me that wanderlust. They're, they're the one that made me be this flipping weird techno tourist that I am at the moment where I kind of jump on cheap Ryanair flights and hop to these kind of fun different cities all over the place to basically absorb their town, absorb what they do and kind of kind of catch a vibe and whatnot and this article here courtesy of ra is another example as to why the site was so good back then obviously it's gone through some changes editorially staff wise and maybe kind of you know overall what they stand for and the kind of product is maybe watered down maybe it's a reflection of the scene i don't know but this is for me another example as to why ra was definitely one of the better platforms in dance music overall when it comes to putting these articles together this article is titled as follows the founder of hop tosse a berlin's beloved club revealed the secrets to their longevity and if you don't know that hop tosse is basically a club that's on a boat and it's from the founders of a cl another club called club division air which is essentially on the canal which is one of the most i think captive well, i I think awe inspiring or maybe kind of appeal yeah, maybe awe inspiring clubs to go to because of the decking that it's got that kind of looks out to the canal, the fact that the music policy is really eclectic and wild and not very much centered around techno, which is very different and very kind of bizarre for Berlin because of course it's a techno city for the most part. So to go to a club like Club Divisionaire and kind of go into this really amazing little spot where you only have to pay like between five euros to ten euros, sometimes maybe maximum fifteen euros to go in and you use usually have great DJs playing all the way until like Monday morning when they open on the Saturday and there's this nice decking looks over a canal and when the sun comes up you can be out there smoking a cigarette or tripping balls off of MDMA or something it's ridiculously perfect but they've also got this other spot that they have that's on the boat which is a flipping crazy place to be at I haven't actually been there yet I'm, I'm actually going to be going there when I go in April I've always walked past it but whenever I'm going I'm always going to have got other plans in mind but this time that I go in April um, hopefully I'm going to April 22nd I'm definitely going to make sure that I visit there and kind of, you know, see what it's all about because I've DJed on a boat before. I've played on a boat for like a staff party back when I was doing that sort of kind of grind and hustle. And, you know, let me tell you, it's not the most easiest place to kind of play and to kind of set up and to kind of create a vibe overall. But I love that how this kind of article essentially dives deep into how they basically made it work. And what I like about the feature, the interview, what they speak about is twofold. Number one, is that Hop Tosse, they've not tried to make it a club on the boat. They've tried to utilize it being a boat and try to basically make it work as also being a club, if you get what I mean. They haven't just tried to like soundproof all of it and basically try to make it to a moving thing. They basically worked within its parameters and basically it's like a, it feels like an ongoing project that they're kind of fine tuning, figuring out what speakers work, um, what sort of bar system they want to use, what sort of booking policy they have. It's all kind of malleable and kind of changes over time. But I do like the entire feature because it kind of is an interview where they where they speak to the two guys involved 
involved with um, Hop Tosse, which is uh, Gregor Kramer and a guy called David Hone. And they go through the entire thing. And there's a video clip here, actually. Some great pictures, obviously, on the boat as well. But there's a video clip where they talk about how they basically um, repurpose the space and create it. And I think it was a really good kind of insight into what goes into kind of creating these sort of amazing little spaces. And I'm going to play the video here now so you can kind of get a feel of this amazing club on the boat that isn't trying to be a club it's trying to be a club in a boat which i think is fucking perfect so this is a video courtesy of ra it says repurposing unique spaces hop tosse a dj once jumped into water after he lost his records it was actually winter it was minus eight or something after a long party we left and he skipped his record back from the bridge into the water. Shall I mention the name? <laughs> Actually, it's Francesco Delgada, and we call him since then Francesco Del Aqua. <laughs> I'm Gregor. We founded CDV in 2001 and Hopper Tosse in, we took over in 2013. I still uh, do all the bookings. I'm still passionate in music and always looking for the best sound. Uh, my name is David. I started here in 2006 as a boat builder and then later on I continued in uh, CDV. Uh, also set up an event agency with other boats and venues. The first time I saw the boat, it was on the other side of the harbor, laying there. They just brought it there. The upper deck was cut off, like so I saw the underdeck, and you know, it was quite impressive actually. And then to see the second floor built on top of it again, it's, that's a massive boat here. It's, it's going to be fun. Yeah, I really liked it because it's an amazing view here and actually my home harbor, <laughs> let's say, yeah. The main problem with taking over a boat is that it's not supposed to be a club. In the winter it's in the water, so it's really hard to heat. In the summer it's still in the water and it's really hard to cool. And then also there's a um, problem with the height of the room. To put a proper sound system in here is challenging because when it's empty you have a complete different sound um, experience than when it's full because the room around the people gets smaller. So you need like a setting that is somehow in between for a full and an empty club. The condition of the boat is also quite important that you have something which is uh, not too rusty maybe. You need your permits and electricity is important. The boat is moving, it's a moving part and then you have a cable that is basically needs to be stabilized. So that's the challenge of electricity going on board and then also water going in and out of the boat. So this is obviously the hopper tosser and um, we'll start going on the former foredeck which was not covered originally, we covered it. I think this is one of the best views in Berlin that you can get. In summer this is a, also a bar, we have a bar here and then a tent set up and more tables. Over there you can see the bar shift and this is the arena which is a big event space. Here we are in the main floor. This is the entrance, you come in, you have the bar, nice bar around. DJ booth, chilling area and that's the dance floor. And that's our new sound system, which is custom made for us. It's made from a guy in Slovenia. I like uh, his approach because uh, the way he builds speakers, it's like coaxial speakers in, uh, up front here. And he has like an idea of a very round sound, which is quite fat, but still very defined. This is our downstairs floor. 
So now down here on this floor, it's different. This is not a custom-made uh, sound system for us. It's like uh, more like a patchwork and uh, by try and error system, I'd say. Yeah, that's how you do it. We have like the DJ booth in the back, which brings us to a situation where we could install four of uh, good bases over here. On top, we have in the corners also some old d &B speakers, which I really love. They're very well built. I think it's always good to combine things and see what's working. Especially for places like this, which yeah. are not normal, acoustically perfectly That's set up. That's right, actually, yeah. If you want to start a business like that on a boat, it's very important uh, to check out the spot where you are, neighbors, because you have the problem with sound on, on water travels a lot. I mean, back in the days in Berlin, there were many more spaces used for, for clubs and venues and everything. But I think the sound problem with neighbors really pushed clubs further and further away. So I think the sound issue is the most important. So make sure that you don't have very close neighbors next to you. Otherwise, you need to soundproof the boat very properly, what we also did. Anyway, you get the gist. It's absolutely amazing space. I can't wait to visit it when I do eventually go there. I've got a couple of people in the chat saying to me, yeah, it's a good spot. Citizen saying I can smell the speed through the screen. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely, 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 definitely can't wait um, to go and flip in, um, check it out. I really, really, really can't wait to check it out. Um, what people say, Nightrunner saying was, I'm like, yeah, da, 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 but hopefully see you in the comment thing because I feel you should really think about going to a big <laughs> lows. Yeah, why not, mate? I might make it, uh, 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 I might film the whole process, actually. But yeah, um, big up Hoptos saying, again, I was checking this video and it's a really cool little series that they've got, I think for promoters anyway, RA. So they put this really cool series together. I'm pretty sure it's called like for the promoters. Let me quickly just make the screen smaller. But I'm pretty sure it's like a promoter series, which is really cool. So it's kind of giving people kind of an insight into what goes into kind of building these covers. They're kind of looking, yeah, it's called The Art of Promoting. If they're kind of looking to sort of check it out and kind of build a club themselves. And also just for people curious, you know, if you're just a fan like I was. But I think for me, ever since I kind of saw what Rogan has done with the um, comedy mothership that he's got over there in Austin, and kind of how you've been able to sort of like scratch that itch and being somebody that's clearly a stand-up, you know, geek and fiend and obsessive with it. Even though if you don't think Rogan's funny, he's kind of doing um, what he kind of, you know, a dream maybe of all maybe comedians, if they had the ability and means to just open your own club and book yourself and your friends and kind of do rewrite all the wrongs of the industry in your own sort of space. And I think that's what I'm kind of going for as well. So that my, my North Star, as Brendan Schaub would say, is to kind of have my own club. And when I see stuff like this and I see what they're doing out there in Berlin, it kind of fills me with hope and inspiration of what I'm going to end up doing in the future. But it's also a little bit bittersweet because you know this is only, a, this is kind of the only place probably in Europe that something like this can kind of exist where this kind of legit club on the boat basically, you know, does its thing um, kind of all year round. And obviously they have the ability to kind of go into Club de Visionaire also. I don't know if they're kind of, you know, evolving on from that, but Club de Visionaire feels like more of a seasonal place that's only open in the summer, which won't be open by the time I go, which I'm really gutted about. But still, I love that they're kind of providing this and being kind of open with it. And I also love the fact that the clubs in general have such, or well, over there anyway, they pay such attention to detail, to the sound, there's a lot that goes into it. You don't hear, really hear these guys speaking about or kind of, you know, pontificating on the need to make sure that they book the top 15 people on DJ Mag or like on, you know, Mix Mag Top 50, Top 100. It's all just something that they do from friends of friends, recommendations. They'll try people out. There's a clip on, I think there's a section of the interview where he mentions he kind of gave, I think, somebody from Slow Life, a promotion um, group and also a record label, a chance to do a party because the guys kept beg, kind of bugging him and they gave him a random day to kind of do it and then he kind of caught on and then they kind of became part of the family. So clearly there's always a kind of a chance to kind of have your event go on there. And I'm sure if I was living out there, and I was able to kind of prove my worth and kind of show that I had some level of community, I'm sure they'll probably give me an opportunity to put on the party there also. But why not take the inspiration forward? Why not think bigger, in the words of Virgil Abloh, instead of thinking super, super small? Why not just think, hey, why not I set up my own club? It'll be fucking interesting though in the future because I'll probably be the only person who's still renting, doesn't own a car, 
but also has their own club. <laughs> It'll be one of those kind of things because I'm sure having clubs is the same thing like, you know, having a bar or a pub. You can just take over an existing space um, instead of kind of building up from the ground up. It's what people do in restaurants. It just gets spots already that might have kitchens in them and kind of build up that way. Or you can kind of repurpose a new spot, but you can kind of take over spots that already kind of exist and just kind of paint over the X name and kind of restart it that way. Um, that could also be an option, but I'm definitely going to look forward and kind of look to do that when I go um, sometime in the future to have my own club but I am really looking forward to going to visit this place in April and I can't wait to go see what's about because you know like 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 unlike some places over there it kind of you know centers are more around disco a lot of electro a lot of house music so not a lot of techno in there but obviously they have some of the best people playing there also especially people that want to play after hours because it's open until Monday and the thing is I remember when I passed it in the winter sometime I think around June no, I think I'm in October of last year. I kind of walked past it because I was on my way to go somewhere else. And it looked really wet. It looks super sticky. So it's the kind of place where, because the guy even says in the clip, where it's kind of really hard to heat and to keep warm in the winter. And it's really hard to cool in the summer. So I can imagine in the winter, it's super cold. But in the summer, it must be horrendous. It must be like melting level in there. Tops off in all sorts because, you know, it's just crazy. And the one thing I have to give Berlin clubs credit for is that they do keep them really well air conditioned. They're, they're really good with flipping them locker rooms and cloak rooms and stuff. They got decent bars with cocktails in them, you know, which is not really a thing you would do if you go to a nightclub. But I feel like most nightclubs in Berlin have pretty decent cocktail menus. But one thing they're really good at is making sure the clubs are cool, which is a complete opposite to our clubs here in London. The clubs here in London are so warm. It's ridiculous. Like there's no chance of you ever going into a club in London that's got good air conditioning. It doesn't exist. I think some places even just turn it off because the costs are probably too high, especially with the cost of energy going up. But this little, um, on the screen now, there's a picture. Sorry, there's a, what you can see is basically a video um, taken from Hop Tosse that features, it's titled, How to Set Up Turntables for a Club. And essentially, they've got an in-house team that just basically sets up, you know, all their audio visual computer, so all their audio set up inside the club. And I think in the article, they mentioned that they've got like up to between 60 to 120 people that work behind the scenes set up in the club, which I didn't know. So there's so many people that kind of work to kind of keep that place running. But this is a mark of how seriously they take clubbing there, that they have a guy who specifically knows how to tune a turntable for like a moving space in general so i love the fact that they go through everything it's really it's just really anal i watched it already i'm not going to kind of subject you guys to it but it's an amazing little video of him basically fine-tuning a techniques turntable and making sure and giving all these tips about how you can basically make sure it's leveled make sure it's kind of centered all this sort of acoustic stuff it's absolutely incredible to kind of check out and kind of goes to the fact of why I like clubbing out there so much because it's just high level in terms of how they present it. It can be a bit annoying, like when you go to places like Bergheim and they turn you away because you don't look a certain way or because you don't match the vibe. It can be quite annoying and it, it can be something it's quite hard not to take personally that you're getting turned away from places. But when you do finally get into some of these spots, you realize why they take such a, why they go so hard to make sure people that are in there are kind of cool and kind of know what's up because the sound systems, the programming, who they book and stuff is just high, high level and I absolutely love it, man. So big up all of them, big up what they're doing out there. And I really, really honestly cannot wait to get out there and to kind of see what that place is about and rave in a boat because like I said, I played in boats before. I played in one boat where I was DJing for like an alleged 60, 70 night or something, which is absolutely horrendous. I'm so happy that I'm not doing that shit ever again, but it was really hard and really difficult to kind of keep the vibes going in a space like that. So I can just imagine what it must be like to run um, an actual club like that day to day. It must be absolutely crazy. So big up everybody associated with those guys. Big up everybody associated with those guys.